The royal wedding marked the beginning of William and Kate's life as the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge. The future for the royal couple is a life very different from their university romance. William and Kate are set to change the face of the British monarchy. Its very survival may depend on them. No other girlfriend but Kate was ever seen in public with William. It took a long time for him to be certain that Kate was the right one for him. Engaged after an eight-year courtship, the couple began their official duties before their wedding. William was sure that Kate was now ready to embrace her new life as his princess and a member of the Royal House of Windsor. It did take a bit of time for us to get to know each other, um, but we did become, you know, very close friends from, from quite early on. The traumas of William's childhood helped to mould his character. Everything about William you can uh, trace back to what happened to his parents. Um, he lived through the bitter breakup of their marriage. He knows um, how much uh, what happened to them destroyed their marriage. He's very concerned not to make the same mistakes. Four years before their wedding, William split from Kate, but he soon returned. It wasn't only Kate he missed. It was also her happy home life in a quiet English village and her loving parents, Carol and Michael. Kate's family, she's got a very, very close family um, and I get on really well with them and I'm very lucky that they've been so supportive. Uh, Mike and Carol have, have only been you know, really sort of loving and caring and really fun um, and have been really welcoming towards me so I felt really part of the family uh, and I hope Kate's felt the same with my family. She's been very loyal to him, very supportive. And for a kid from a broken home, which is after all what William is, he's always yearned towards the stable and towards the steady. And it's not just Kate that he is, uh, is in love with, really. It's the family. He's definitely found a maternal bond with, with her. And I think provided that laughs and he feels cosseted and adored and he has that kind of wonderful connectedness with her, the marriage will be long, happy, faithful, all those things. Unlike other girls who have married future kings, Kate was just a commoner from humble beginnings. William will have to introduce her gently to the demands of royal life. I think William will be incredibly supportive of Kate and, and ensure that she's looked after. We've seen it already, they've very much set their own agenda. The Middleton family have made a remarkable rise to social prominence. Officially called Catherine, Kate Middleton has brought a modern, friendly touch to the royal family. She is now a princess and a future queen of Great Britain. As the Duchess of Cambridge, she is starting an amazing journey in life with the man she loves. We're hugely excited and uh, it's, you know, we're looking forward to spending the rest of the time, you know, rest of our lives together. This young couple will have to ensure that the monarchy stays popular and relevant in an era of continuing social change. For their first public event as a married couple, the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge were the guests of honour at the dazzling gala dinner for ARC, a children's charity. Wearing a shimmering pink dress, Kate was the main attraction amid the wealthy and famous who raised over £17 million that night for disadvantaged children. It is in this spirit that my brother, Catherine and I, hope to use our philanthropy as a long-term catalyst for meaningful change. Just like William's mother Diana, they will help charitable causes. Charity is very important both to William and, and Kate. Obviously, William strongly resembles his mother and, and would want his wife to be a humanitarian too. The first affair of state attended by Kate after her wedding was the annual Trooping of the Colour Ceremony. William took part wearing full military dress. Kate watched her husband riding in the parade. This is her new environment surrounded by members of the royal family, all celebrating the Queen's official birthday in June. It was the Queen's big day, but inevitably all eyes were on the newlywed William, wearing his ceremonial bearskin and uniform, and on Kate. 
It was the first time she had stood on the palace balcony since her wedding. She will have to join the royal family for events like this for the rest of her life. William is a modern prince. He does not enjoy unnecessary protocol, but accepts that traditional displays like this are part of the royal world. Two months before their wedding, William and Kate's first public engagement together was in Anglesey, the Welsh island where they have made a home. Royal National Lifeboat Institution asked them to launch a new lifeboat. A newspaper front page summed up the occasion. It was a great success. Kate joined in the singing in both Welsh and English. In February, the couple returned to St Andrews University, where their love story began. This is a very special moment for Catherine and me. It feels like coming home. Despite being one of Europe's leading research institutions, the third oldest university in the English-speaking world. They were first filmed together in 2003 when they were housemates. A year later, the truth was out when they holidayed together on the ski slopes. William wanted to protect his love from media attention and he was too young to be sure about marriage. When he started St Andrews University in 2001, William wanted to be an ordinary student, shut away from the press and enjoying a normal life while he had the chance. He's always been a lot older than his years. So by the time he was 19, he was very kind of wary of the outside world, deeply suspicious. And obviously, given what happened to his father, being eviscerated by the press, given what happened to his mother, he's got a very jaundiced view of the world. Shortly before Charles's wedding to Camilla, William, then 22, was asked about his marriage. Could there be another wedding perhaps on the card sometime soon? <laughs> uh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> After university, Kate was still waiting for William's commitment. They needed to decide where they were going to go from here. Clearly, it's a little bit different for them conducting a relationship in the full glare of the media and with all of the trappings that William's life as second in line to the throne has. And we understand that he may have had doubts. Was Kate the one for him? Clearly, he doesn't want to make any mistakes like his father did before him. There's pressure on him from the Queen and Prince Philip because they don't want any more divorces in the royal family. Um, I think there were lots of question marks hanging over their relationship, which they needed to just take some time out and um, get a hold of it and really make up their minds that they wanted to be together. On Kate's 25th birthday in 2006, she was buzzed by the paparazzi who considered her fair game. But despite the pressures, Kate and her family remained discreet. If you look at Kate and the whole history of the time they've been together, we've not had one kiss and tell, we've not had any former boyfriends coming out of the woodwork, we've had nothing from the Middletons. Now that has got to earn them huge favours, not only with Prince William and Harry, who value loyalty and discretion over everything, but also with people like the Queen and Prince Philip and Prince Charles, who, again, don't want anyone speaking out of turn. After university, William undertook a specially tailored training scheme in each of the three armed forces. As king, he will be commander-in-chief of all branches of the British military. After long stints away in the army, he spent a short period with the Navy. It was his Royal Air Force training that he liked best. That determined his choice of career as a search and rescue pilot. Flying fixed-wing aircraft and later helicopters became a passion. He described flying solo as an amazing feeling. William and Kate had been together for eight years when they announced their engagement. They were both 28 years old. His parents hardly knew each other when they became engaged. Diana was 19, Charles 31. I, I, I'm amazed that she's uh, been brave enough to take me on. <laughs> and I suppose in love. Of course. <laughs> Whatever in love means. 
there were no embarrassing hesitations with William and Kate on the day of their engagement. You look back to the photographs of, of Charles and Diana and, and that dreadful comment he made, which when he was nervous about whatever love means. I mean, you can imagine if William had said that to Kate, she'd have um, given him a smart tap on the shoulder. Um, so it did take a bit of time for us to get to know each other, um, but we did become, you know, very close friends from, from quite early on. William had kept Diana's engagement ring after her death, and he gave it to Kate when he proposed to her. It's my mother's engagement ring. So I thought it was quite nice because um, obviously she's not going to be around to share any of the, um, the fun and excitement of it all. This, this is my way of keeping her sort of close to it all. I guess we better, we better have a look at it. What, what kind of ring is it? Are you an expert on what's... Uh... I'm not an expert on it on <laughs> at all. I've been reliably informed it's a sapphire with some diamonds, but I'm sure everyone recognises it from, uh, from previous times. So. It was a poignant reference to his parents' lives. Everything about William you can... Uh, trace back to what happened to his parents. Um, he lived through the bitter breakup of their marriage. He knows um, how much uh, what happened to them destroyed their marriage. He's very concerned not to make the same mistakes. I suspect there are all sorts of things running through his mind about all this, what happened to his parents, particularly what happened to his father, who clearly made a terrible choice when he was a young man, and he doesn't want to do that. Thank you, oh, yes, it's a normal cool. colour. Is it? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> you can't remember how many times you dyed it now, can you? No, I don't. <laughs> I was like really angry at me for a minute there. Yeah. yeah. In 2007, singer Joss Stone helped William and Harry organise a concert in Diana's memory. Amid the big names from the entertainment world, William still had the star quality that has impressed many people. I remember seeing him at uh, St Mary's Hospital. He returned to the birthing unit where he was born and nurses were literally swooning in the corridors because he was around. He has got that X factor, but whether he's comfortable with that um, is another matter and I don't think we'll see him doing the kind of performing, perhaps, that his mother was famous for. Sorry to keep on waiting. I'll try and keep on time next time, it'll be better. <laughs> what we also know about Prince William is, while he is very much his own man and certainly won't be told what to do, he likes to decide it for himself, he's also been very clever in surrounding himself by an extremely tight-knit group of friends, the so-called circle of trust, who friends from Eton, for instance, who really he now trusts implicitly. And Kate is at the centre of that. Often you'll see Kate go out without him, being chaperoned by one of his very old friends from the Eton days. And I think by doing that, William's almost cocooned himself from the outside world in that he knows who he can trust and he knows that these people aren't going to be leaking stories. William was an usher at the wedding of his old pal, Edward Van Cutsum, and the Duke of Westminster's daughter, Tamara. Some of his social set were slow to accept Kate. When Catherine met William, she was really punching above her social weight. She was, after all, a girl from a, a middle-class home dealing with the upper classes where everybody who came for dinner was Lord or Lady this, the Van Cutsum family, for example, great friends of the royals, especially Prince Charles. You know, mixing those kinds of circles, she will have felt in early on quite intimidated about it. And I remember that one of their friends telling me that, that Catherine didn't like the fact that you know, she'd be cooking in the kitchen and being treated a bit like a skivvy, and William would be chatting away to some you know, lord or lady who was a, a student at the, at the college. So it did, that, that social divide did create tensions early on in the relationship. Now, uh, Catherine is friendly with most of William's friends. There is some snobbery towards Kate Middleton, who's very cruelly, I think, and unfairly become known as Kate Middle Class. She is a middle class girl, essentially, from Berkshire, um, but it seems to be William's friends, some of William's friends, that have a problem with it. Like his father before him, William loves polo, a game for rich players that attracts the higher echelons of society. Kate has learned to mix with the polo playing set who form William's friendship circle. This has not been easy. They are known as the Glossy Posse. They're the set that come from Gloucestershire. They mix with William at Highgrove 
and they are essentially the sons and daughters of wealthy blue-blooded aristocrats and they are the ones that can be terribly snobby. When William began St Andrews University at 19, he was one of the world's most eligible bachelors. Inevitably, his choice of bride became a source of media speculation. Kate was just one of a number of girls linked with him. Before her, the student prince had an adorning circle of rich and well-connected admirers. But which one would become his princess? The guessing game continued for years. Among early suitors and possible contenders was his childhood friend, Jekka Craig. The palace even denied reports of romance. Just before he dated Kate, he had a six-week fling with fellow student Carly Massey Birch. And Catherine will have seen him with all these very pretty girls, you know, Carly Massey Birch, who's still a friend, Olivia Hunt, other 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 girls who are all, you know, fabulous looking socialites and so on. But she has triumphed over all of them. So she will be able to take a degree of comfort from that. And quite frankly, you know. She's a very good-looking girl herself. When William and Kate separated for a while, the split was blamed on his army life, but that was only part of the story. He just wasn't ready to make Kate his bride when he had years of military training ahead. I think Kate pushed him into a corner. I think she wanted some more commitment. William was very hard at work at the military, um, very busy. He had exams training, he was very involved with his, with his military commitments. Um, and I think at the same time, it had been increasingly difficult for them to spend time together. William would spend Monday to Fridays at the barracks in Bovington, so his time was completely taken up with military commitments. And at the weekends, he ended up staying up with his new friends, his new army pals. He didn't want to come back down to London every weekend. It's pretty simple, really. Prince William thought he could do better thought the grass was greener on the other side. I mean, and as a prince, you walk into a room and you get used to the fact that every single woman in the room is looking at you and thinking, I fancy my chances there. And Catherine, she wanted more commitment from him. He wouldn't give it. They split up. She did what girls who've been jilted for, for centuries have done. She put on a brave face, went out and had fun and seemed like she didn't have a care in the world. She put on something that was short, high and tight, looked great. And he was there watching the newspapers and thinking, hmm, I don't want somebody having a roll in the hay with my girl. I'd better get back with her. After a brief spell apart, William realised what he had lost and that he might never find anyone as good as Kate. He was soon on his motorbike, romancing Kate again at her home in the village of Bucklebury. It wasn't only Kate he missed, it was also her happy, comfortable home life. The self-made Middletons became the role models for his future. The family joined Kate when William finished his army training at Sandhurst Military Academy, with the traditional ceremony watched by the Queen. Their presence was taken as a sign that Kate had become the official girlfriend of the prince and her very ordinary family were important to him. Her mother, Carol, was an air hostess, her father, Michael, a flight dispatcher, before they started a party goods business that made them millionaires, enabling them to send their children to expensive schools. Some of William's snootier friends poked fun at Kate's mother because of her working class roots, but he's been very loyal to the family. The Middletons will share in the upbringing of William and Kate's children, the next generation in line to the throne. I, I think William is incredibly close to Kate's family. He spends a lot of time with them and he's very fond of them. He is attracted to, to the stable upbringing and background she's had and, and I'm sure that he and Kate will want to replicate her childhood for their own children. Kate enjoyed normal childhood activities like joining the Brownies. A tall, rather pale and shy girl who blossomed into a beauty when she grew up, she was always secure in her parents' love. 
one of the things which attracted him to Catherine and also to the Middleton family is the fact that they're a safe, steady, stable family. And he's um, and much of their courtship was spent at Bucklebury, the family home, uh, having a quiet pint in the local pub, away from prying eyes, away from uh, long lenses, but just enjoying casual, normal life with the Middleton family. William's girlfriend became public property, with every aspect of her childhood and schooling examined in the press. Journalists went in search of the schoolgirls who tormented a teenage Kate Middleton and unearthed memories of bullying. Even distant members of her family were victims of media exposure. Her student brother was caught wearing fancy dress. The most damaging criticism was about Kate's lack of a proper career. A graduate in art history, she worked part-time for her parents' business and for a fashion company called Jigsaw. I think Kate's in an invidious position. She has been with William for a long time, eight years, and, and to have to go into work every morning and not be able to talk about what you did the night before it is very difficult. She's had to trust people and She's worked with her family. Saying that, many people in this country work for the family business. It's not that unusual of all, all backgrounds. And she's been working quietly behind the scenes and, and helping them earn a living. In 2008, William and his fellow RAF cadets were presented with their wings by Prince Charles. Waiting inside was Kate, sitting next to Diana's sister, Lady Sarah McCorkadale. As William stepped up to receive his award from his proud father, Kate was watching. Note how William turns to see Kate's reaction before leaving the platform, and how Kate noticed his attention. William was happy and relaxed, starting out in the branch of the military that he loved best. He joined the group photo with Charles and his stepmother, Camilla. He has long accepted Charles's second marriage and welcomed Camilla as a companion for his father. As another royal wife, Camilla will prove a good advisor for Kate. In choosing a career in the Air Force, William was departing from traditional royal service, usually in the Army or Navy. William would do things his way, and Kate would wait for William until the time was right for marriage. I, I think Kate has taken on the role and, and knows what is expected of her. There are benefits and, and there are downfalls to, to any job and she has signed up for it and is welcoming it with open arms. As Princess Elizabeth, the Queen, married Prince Philip in 1947. After seeing so many royal divorces, she now welcomes girls from less elevated backgrounds into her family. The Queen particularly is quite in favour of someone rather unattractively termed a commoner marrying the younger members of the royal family because she sees middle-class girls with a good university education as a better bet than perhaps the kind of aristocratic prima donnas that might have been singled out for princes in the days gone by. Her experience with people who are less common, say Fergie, who was a commoner of sorts but yet she was the daughter of an army officer and so she probably ha was from the higher echelons than somebody like Kate Middleton, they've gone disastrously wrong. So maybe she's quite happy for people who are just stable, common or garden, middle class girls. When the Queen was crowned in 1953, she was the 26 year old mother of two young children, Charles and Anne. Huge responsibilities were placed on her. William and Kate's marriage will be completely different from, from the Queen's in, in terms of having children and, and producing an heir. That The Queen was the monarch and a mother and had to juggle two very difficult roles. At, at a time when she came to the throne, Prince William is, is going to spend his early married years out of the limelight to a certain extent. He's not working as a working royal as such. And, and his father has yet to ascend to the throne, so William and Kate will probably be able to bring up their family before he even has to think of ruling the country. 
Among the guests at the royal wedding were William's uncle, Prince Edward, and his wife, Sophie. Like Kate, she came from an ordinary background. They married in 1999, and theirs had proved to be one of the most successful royal marriages. Sophie, too, faced media scrutiny, but as a successful public relations executive running her own company, she was well prepared. Sophie Rees-Jones, Prince Edward's wife, is a perfect example of somebody who slotted into the royal family brilliantly. And this, let's face it, is the daughter of a tyre salesman. But because she's very level-headed and she's very together and she's led a so-called normal life, she's fitted in perfectly and now she's extremely close to the Queen. 30 years ago, Lady Diana Spencer brought youth and glamour to the royal family. Since her tragic death in 1997, no one has taken her place so far in the nation's heart. If there's going to be anyone that's going to be replacing Diana, then it's going to be Prince William's wife. And I think if she's got that dazzle factor, which Kate does appear to have, she appears to be able to sell newspapers and intrigue cameramen, then clearly she's a very good bet for the royal family. As Princess Elizabeth, the Queen spent the first five years of her marriage with Prince Philip in Malta where she was on naval duty. Kate's early married life is going to be very similar to that of the Queen's when she lived in Malta. Kate will be spending her first years as, as a newlywed, um, living in a cottage in Anglesey, and, and the Queen obviously spent her life um, as, as a military wife too. Flight Lieutenant William Wales, as he's known in the Royal Air Force, pilots Sea King helicopters, sometimes flying over the mountains of North Wales in treacherous weather. After a long day or night with his colleagues, he goes back home to Kate at their cottage near his base at RAF Valley in Anglesey. It's a life he much prefers to his royal duties. He's only done a handful of royal engagements. He's done a couple of short uh, royal tours on his own. He's not, he's not really being a fully-fledged member of the royal family firm. So, in a way, he's learning the ropes just as she is. And he's not used to being the star of the show. He's left that to his dad. For a boy who likes to be out of the limelight, you know, likes to be watching soccer on TV, watching a movie, he'll, let, he'll be thrilled if uh, the burden of taking on public duties is left to Catherine. Her official job will be providing support to her husband. They will be expected to make foreign tours, like their first destinations to Canada and California. At home in North Wales, she's a real housewife of Anglesey, shopping and cooking for her husband and running their cottage without full-time staff. She's an organised girl. She's, she's always been that way. She's, she's the kind of girl who enjoys things like sewing and knitting, and she was taught to, to do that by her grandmother. And I, I always find it interesting that the sewing was so beautiful on the wedding dress. Again, that's an influence of uh, Catherine's. She's a girl who's organised in a very feminine way. In 1983, Diana and Charles took baby William on tour to Australia and New Zealand. It was a very arduous trip. Later, Diana said, I realised the sense of duty, the level of intensity of interest and the demanding role I now found myself in. She was frazzled, poor kid. I mean, I remember meeting her for the first time in Australia, 1983, April. She was suntanned, she was red, she was hot, she was bothered, she was nervous. She started that tour as a very nervy cult, shall, shall we say, and she emerged at the end of it after six weeks of being on the road, a seasoned royal performer. And I think that with Catherine, you're gonna see the same things. But Kate has had a longer time to prepare than Diana. She was well-groomed by the time she began royal duties. In Belfast on Shrove Tuesday, as William's fiancée, she happily entered into the spirit of pancake tossing. She may fare much better than Diana. 
I hope that she didn't cope with it like Diana because for the first few years, Diana just was overwhelmed. She was pregnant inside the royal family within three months. She was suffering from an eating disorder, bulimia nervosa. She was very suspicious of Prince Charles' relationship with Camilla Parker Bowles. On top of that, she was decorating a new house. Um, and that's something else that Catherine's got to think about. In 1969, 20-year-old Charles was invested as Prince of Wales. William might also become a Prince of Wales one day. When Charles accedes to the throne, William automatically becomes Duke of Cornwall, benefiting from the Duchy's rich estates and revenues. The Duchy's income is over £17 million a year. William comes from an extremely wealthy family, with palatial private homes like Balmoral in Scotland, Sandringham in Norfolk. Charles's country home is Highgrove in Gloucestershire. One day, all this will be William's. Then there's Clarence House, where William and Kate lived for a while. Now the couple are moving into an apartment in Kensington Palace, very near to Diana's old home, with its memories of where William and Harry grew up. William is a countryman at heart. Like the rest of the royal family, he enjoys country pursuits such as hunting, Can he and Kate, with her ordinary background, really be compatible? Their charts are sort of mirror image of each other, which means that they really come from the same place. They view the world in the same way, through the same lens. So there's a tremendous amount of sharing and caring and connection and all those kind of really, really good things make a marriage work. On Royal Wedding Day, television cameras recorded the royal guests arriving at Westminster Abbey. Then came Tara Palmer Tompkinson, a reformed drug addict. Her stunning wedding outfit was deployed to divert attention from her new nose treatment, undertaken to combat the ravishes of her cocaine abuse in the past. And William may have to be wary of people who use their royal connections as Tara has frequently done. The Palmer Tompkinsons are rich landowners and part of the court that surrounds Charles and Camilla. Tara's proximity to Charles and his sons has raised concern in the past. William will have to choose his own court carefully. His social circle should reflect a wider Britain than his father's does. Prince William's polo playing set still form the nucleus of his sporting circle. He still enjoys the company of an exotic set of the very rich and privileged. Charles also played polo as a young man. He met Camilla at a polo match in the early 1970s. She became his secret married mistress, the third person in his marriage to Diana. Many years later, Charles confessed their long affair. Now some wonder if history will repeat itself with William. During their long courtship, Kate was aware that other girls were attracted to him. But William has shown her total commitment since their short separation. Although women may still find him attractive, hopefully he will remain faithful and not take a mistress like his father did. No woman knows whether they're going to tolerate their husband's mistress until they discover it and have to com confront it. I think that Catherine has, has proved herself to be very loyal, very patient, and also very forgiving. Um, but I don't think this is a relationship where they go into it thinking it's going to fall apart. They made their vows in front of the world, not just the Archbishop of Canterbury. Charles married his mistress, Camilla, in 2005. She is now the Duchess of Cornwall, but she has not found her royal role easy. Charles and Camilla have an understanding that she needs her own space with her family of her first marriage. Camilla retreats more and more uh, to her old home, Raymill House, which she kept um, after marrying Charles very wisely as a bolt hole. Um, it is one of the few places where she really feels she can sort of kick off her shoes and, and, and sort of be a little bit more liberated. I think she is finding adjusting to royal life quite demanding. Um, she's not 
a great fan of, of royal tours or royal engagements. But, you know, she's made a bed and she's got to lie in it. With the scandals of their past behind them, Charles and Camilla have made a good marriage, uniting their two families. Camilla is gradually being accepted by the public. I think Charles's second marriage is obviously a much better match and he had to wait a very long time to get there. And so it's almost like, you know, over the years they proved themselves as a couple. The interesting thing is that how much do we change as people? I mean, we gain in our experience and wisdom, I hope, but we're always essentially the same person. And so Charles is always who he is and he has a kind of awkward chart. He is, a, you know, it doesn't, it's not an easy fit when you start looking at love and relationships. It's full of idealism and romanticism and not being very good at reality. Um, so he was going to find that an obstacle with whoever he was with. I think what's curious here is that Camilla has many features in her chart that Diana did as well. So in a way, he's just got a kind of older version of the same record. Um, only, of course, Camilla had a different upbringing, a different life. You know, all those things make her different. But there are some really interesting connections between Diana, Camilla and Charles. In 2006, a year after their own wedding, Charles and Camilla attended the wedding of Laura, Camilla's daughter from her first marriage. The bride arrived with her father, Camilla's ex-husband, Andrew Parker Bowles. Divorce and remarriage had become a fact of life for the royal family, as for so many others in the land. Laura, who married Harry Lopez, is now William and Harry's stepsister. Her brother Tom is their stepbrother. Among the wedding guests was William's girlfriend, Kate. She was clearly at ease with Camilla's relatives. For the first time, Kate looked like the princess she would become. The press stepped up their speculation on her marriage to William. William's younger cousins, Beatrice and Eugenie, were at the royal wedding with their father, Prince Andrew. Their mother, Sarah Ferguson, was banned because of her numerous scandals. As the Duke and Duchess of York, they had also married at Westminster Abbey, but the couple separated and divorced. Their girls were close to William and Harry in childhood, sharing holidays in both sun and snow. Improving, you see, very good. They're improving. Very good skills. Richard, I'm sorry, could you ask for As royal children, they had to pose for photo calls, something Kate never did until her engagement to William. Yes, it'll be good fun. Very good. Enjoy it. Tiggy Leg Burke was a much loved young nanny who shared many adventures with the young princes. She was brought in to help Charles with his boys after the couple's separation. But Diana was jealous of the influence she had over her sons. Daredevil Harry flourished under her guidance and her kindness helped him to deal with the loss of his mother when he was only 12. A year after Diana's death, William and Harry arrived in Canada for a brief visit with their father. Teenage girls treated the boys like rock stars. William was overwhelmed by it, but Harry lapped it up. Harry became a career soldier, serving on the front line in Afghanistan as a forward air controller with his regiment, the Blues and Royals. He is determined to return there later this year. <laughs> His on-off girlfriend, the South African Chelsea Davy, has had to cope with his passion for polo and his long absences on army duty. Their torrid romance has lasted several years. Oh, it's a real love match. I mean, there's no doubt about it. There's great passion between the two of them. When they're together, the, the, the tension is visible. There's electricity, there's sparks flying everywhere. You can tell that they have a very volatile relationship, tremendous shouting matches screaming rows, but then they get back together again. I would say that of all the uh, 
the Royal Romances uh, currently going on, theirs was the real true thing. It's a real deal. And um, I suspect, unless something catastrophic happens, they will marry, but it'll be a very tempestuous marriage. Astrologically, they're a perfect match. They're like a match like Catherine and William. And it's hard for me to see how he will replace her, Chelsea, with anyone else. I think it's, uh, I think it's a strong bond, and we'll have to wait and see what happens. Harry says that Kate is like a sister to him. He spoke about her before a charity trek in Norway. He's gonna, at the end of the day, he's, he's gonna walk down the aisle with his wife, and um, that's, that's fantastic. With Kate married into the House of Windsor, media speculation has shifted to her younger sister, Pippa. Also dark-haired and attractive, Pippa is now Britain's most eligible girl and is tipped to marry a man with a stately home. Pippa was much admired for her appearance as Kate's maid of honour. Shortly before her sister's marriage, she attended the wedding of the Duke of Northumberland's daughter at Annick Castle, the setting for Hogwarts in the Harry Potter films. Pippa is an old friend of the bride's brother. The media have tried to matchmake Harry with Pippa. A union of the princes and the sisters would be an extraordinary double match. Chelsea Davy also attended the Northumberland wedding. This group of wealthy friends move in the same social circles as William and Kate, but can they connect well with ordinary people too? On their last public engagement before their wedding, William and Kate visited Blackburn in Lancashire, one of the poorer parts of the country. Kate was now a polished performer, ready to take on the royal life ahead of her. The couple opened a new state school, clearly at ease with the pupils and happy in each other's company. Kate is now finding married life all she hoped it would be. When Pippa arrived at Westminster Abbey, she was in charge of the bridal party, which included the eight-year-old Tom, son of Tiggy Leg Burke, William's former nanny. Tom is the blonde boy behind the bridesmaids. The great and the good, the famous and the unknown, politicians and potentates, friends and relatives, all assembled for the wedding of the century. Kate, whose family tree includes coal miners, came to Westminster Abbey to marry her prince. This was a real-life fairy tale come true for the whole Middleton family. In looking at William's need for a kind of maternal bond with his woman, it's interesting to me that he may well feel a kind of attraction towards older women and need that kind of sense that he missed to a degree with his own mother dying so early. And maybe it explains too why he felt that kind of um, strong bond with Catherine's mother, Carol Middleton, who uh, would have naturally kind of, you know, wanted to make him feel loved as a mother can do. The Middletons have already, already played a great role by producing a girl as delightful as Catherine, who will help William lead the monarchy through into the, well into the 21st century. But they've also shown their mettle during the royal wedding. I mean, you know, Pippa looked fabulous. James read very well. Um, Michael and Carol really were the doting, loving parents, and they added to the spectacle, added to the sense of the family. So, you know, if the royal wedding was the renewal of the vows between the monarchy and the nation. The Middletons played a very um, significant part in that. When the Queen came to see her grandson marry, she must have recalled the wedding of Charles and Diana 30 years before. Unlike Kate, Diana was the daughter of an earl with a stately home and proud ancestral lineage. 
people wonder what she would have made of her son's choice of bride. I think Diana would be rather jealous, actually, of the fact that uh, <laughs> Catherine has already got a very finished fashion sense, um, that she's very much in control, very capable, uh, with a great eye for detail. Diana always wanted a, a daughter, always wanted to mentor a daughter through the labyrinthine world of the royal family. She'd have enjoyed teaching Catherine the ropes, but there'd have been a twinge of jealousy that she was passing on the fashion baton from one generation to the next. William's commitment and love of Kate evokes the unconditional love that Diana gave William. Kate wears Diana's ring. She will live in her old palace and she will devote her life to Diana's son. Could having a couple so popular in line to the throne have consequences for Charles and Camilla? Prince Charles is the longest serving Prince of Wales in history. He's not going to give up his chance of ruling, of being sovereign, uh, nor would Prince William want him to. He wants to re remain in the background for as long as he can. Uh, but sadly, the opinion polls have been against Prince Charles for the last 20 years. For 20 years, the British public have wanted William over Charles to be king. And if, quite frankly, if the House of Windsor were, was a popularity con contest, William would win it hands down. The world of William and Kate is closer to that of their subjects than any other members of the British royal family. They are the great hope for its survival. Added to that, rumours have been around for a long time that some people do not see Charles becoming king. M many years ago, I was looking at Prince Charles's chart and I felt he might not make it as king. And I remember at the time it was very shocking and people were sort of very, you know, concerned about how could you see that in a horoscope. Well, nothing's changed in my mind. I'm still not sure he'll be king. Now, there may be many reasons for this. It may be that, um, you know, the queen goes on for many, many years. She has a long life ahead of her, like her mother. So by the time, you know, there is the succession due, Charles could be even in his mid-80s, and he might not make it that long. So there are all sorts of reasons why we might not see a King Charles and why we might see a King William next. And I think we have to wait and see how things pan out in the fullness of time. But I think we've got a while to wait. William and Kate are the golden couple of the House of Windsor. Their wedding has won the hearts of the British public. What will their future hold? I think when you see William and Catherine together being married, the very next thing, you know, it's like when a couple get married, you know, when are they going to have a baby? But with William and Catherine, it's really, oh, what kind of king and queen are they going to make? It's the interest of, you know, how they will be in the years to come, presiding over a Britain that may go through all sorts of sea changes. And I mean, you can see straight off the bat in just the way they stand together, who they are as people. This is going to be a great royal couple. They are going to be the right couple for the right time for Britain. William and Kate's wedding has heralded a new and exciting era in the history of the British royal family. Maybe the best is yet to come.